On this episode, stick with me here, we go to the gym with me. This is so ridiculous. This, this is so ridiculous. <laughs> Ready? Yep. Hey everybody, this is Gary Vay, Nerd Chuck, and this is episode 163 of the Ask Gary V Show. It's a little bit of a ridiculous show. I'm, I'm even regretting it as we're like doing this right now. We'll, we'll try to get through this. Um, yeah, so I had to get my workout in. I just landed from LA uh, and uh, I really wanted to do the show today. I was like in a good, good mood for it. And I was on Wi-Fi and Demeo's like, you're not gonna fit it in. And I'm like, well, just send them to the gym. <laughs> so Mike's here. Uh, we're gonna answer some questions, India. So let's uh, show India. India's here Hi. at the gym <laughs> with me. It's so ridiculous. Uh, and D-Rock's gonna hate this episode. There's, <laughs> I mean, I literally look like I'm in a dungeon somewhere trapped. So uh, India, let's get into the show. Um, first, first one. Just brush my teeth, it's disgusting. Chad. Yeah. yeah. Chad asks, so the Square IPO, what are your thoughts on the future of mobile credit services? Yeah, I think that um, this is, I mean, there's, there's a vine out there, by the way, of me like on the toilet. I don't know if people know this, but um, this is starting to feel like a little bit, ter- this was starting to feel like a really bad idea. Um, I think that, uh, I think the wallet will be eliminated and that we will all pay with our mobile devices, maybe with our fingerprints, but the, the wallet is antiquated. It's like a magazine, it's like carving in, uh, in the caves and I think over the next 10 years, technology will be, um, be really in a place where we can go full throttle on electronic payments. Um, obviously there's the blockchain and uh, all that world with Bitcoin. Um, there's also the fact of my historic behavior. Four years ago, maybe five, I invested in Venmo. Maybe six. So I've been on this kick for a while. Uh, I'm a big believer. And I think with Apple Pay, you're seeing more behavior around this. And I'm extremely bullish. So. If you're playing in a space that is like, like you, you make portraits for wallets or you make wallets, uh, that's something to be concerned about over the next decade and, even, and on the flip side, um, if you can support an ecosystem where people don't carry wallets. So like what's the tchotchka that needs to be made in a world where your phone is really your payment thing? So like what's the official Beats by Dre license carrier with the phone? 36 months from now that like is the hot shit that everybody's got on the gram or whatever anybody's paying attention to in 36 months, that's where I'd be using this wave as an entrepreneurial venture opportunity. Let's get well, yeah, we gotta, we gotta respect Mike in this scenario. Upper back. Where, where? The wall? No, no, right here. Oh. Just lay on it? Yep. This way, good. Go uh, one on the ground. Yep. Oh, this. Yeah, yeah. All right, go ahead. All right, from Rupa. Rupa? Rupa asks, I have a startup idea to improve women's underwear. I'm scratching my own itch, but know nobody in the business. Advice? So India, you and I worked on this one today. Uh, We saw this tweet, I sent it to you. You went to go reach out to her, she deleted it. What did she say? Did she like? She said, oh yeah, I just deleted it, but I'll put it back up right now if you're gonna finish. I love it. Um, Mike, this is starting to get good. Look at that. Yeah, I know. Thoracic extension. (laughs) Um, one more. We'll just bang this out. Alright. Um, Ruba, I think that, uh, I think that, uh, that this answer is actually the answer to your question, which is, you don't know me. Hey, Ruba, you don't know me. You don't know me, and you tweeted at me, and here I am responding to you and giving you feedback. Uh, in the same way that you can go and map all 700 executives in the industry and hit them up on Twitter and say, hello, uh, I'd like to talk to you about my business idea and literally three of them 
will say yes, two of them will cancel on you, and one out of the 700 people, and if you think about three to five minutes per engagement, three minutes for, to write the engagement maybe and kind of like check it, and then maybe four to 10 hours of research of who those 700 executives are that you need for marketing or production or the, reta- or the retail world, right? Like, as you try to, <laughs> this is so, this is the most, this is way up there with ridiculous things that I've done. Uh, I am so sorry to the Vader Nation. I thought, I don't know what, what I decided, I don't know how this happened. Anyway, I think that, um, um, I like taking my workout serious too. Um, so I think you have to go and reach out to him. So like I'm telling you that you're gonna get to one person, maybe two, by spending 80, 90 hours of time, which scares way too many of you off. The problem is, what's the alternative? The problem is, what is the alternative? When you're at the bottom and you've got nothing, you've got a scrap. It's like me and Mike, when we first, now I can use this gym, now I'm gonna start using this gym. When we first started here, 16 months ago, Mike told me to do this, this and I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. That's how at the bottom, physically, I was, and then we just systematically did things. That whole thing when I was like, this is good, literally 60 days ago, I couldn't do crap with that because we haven't st- like worked on that flexibility. So yep. anyway, what you have to do is you have to find the 700 people and you have to go and get them. And I would use Twitter, LinkedIn is, a place you can use as well. The problem is so many people spam on LinkedIn, you get so much more upside on Twitter, especially if you don't just like like spam them with the first move, you know, jab, jab, and right hooking. Um, I've said used the wrong. Anyway, uh, so that's it, put in the work. Put in the work. Sean, I was asked to fill out a- Hold on one second, India. I gotta gotta take this as the priority. Just, Just warming up on the curls. Curls? Yep. Oh crap, we're doing arm day. Like the thing I'm weak, this is where I get exposed for the thing I'm weakest at. You curl 40s, that's on, like any fitness people that watch will be like curling 40s is really impressive. Yeah? Well, cool, cause I could, let me show you what I started with. <laughs> I was like, oh Mike, this is never gonna happen. Nah. But we started, but by the way, this was real. And it was like, curling. Yeah. Like my biceps 15, have been, 15, my biceps 15. have been the hard for me. My tries have been good. I will. Okay, go ahead. From Sean. Sean asks, I was asked to fill out a self-evaluation, but I think these are just a waste of time and don't help that much. What do you think? I think it depends on who's on the receiving end of the self-evaluation. There are things that I've done in my career where I've asked employees to do things and never then read it. And that was obviously a waste of time. (laughs) Right? And like, that's not fun for me to admit but like things that I learned as a, as a kid uh, at Wine Library, and the truth is, even as VaynerMedia, there's been things that I've done. A lot of my employees now know, let's do it for, on the call for two minutes instead of emailing me because it's not how I roll. If somebody's on the other end listening to that feedback and actually does something with that feedback, the self-evaluation is tremendous. I think you're barking up the right tree, though, is I don't think that's happening in 99% of organizations, mainly because the intent isn't there to give a crap enough about the employee, and so, my cynical point of view of how businesses are treating their employees leads me to, you're probably right. Now, if you're there because you believe, I'd like to think that India feels good about doing it at VaynerMedia with me on my team, so then it's valuable. But I think, uh, I think it comes down to more about how much you believe in the organization, uh, more so than the tactic that is deployed in a self-evaluation. I also think people are full of crap in self-evaluations. Like you're always gonna give yourself, if it's 50-50, if you're like, am I good or great? Great. Am I lazy or just solid? I'm solid. So like everybody's always leaning to their best benefit. It's human nature. Really, you think everybody is? No, I think that's a good point, Andy. I do think some people are stunningly hard on themselves. Um, But yes, I think, you know, first of all, it's a good opportunity. I never think anything's 100%. What the hell is 100%? Nothing. But yes, I do think the far majority and, and 94%, which allows me to say everybody. What do you want? Diamond push-ups, 15, body weight. I can do these. Bang these out. All right, go ahead. All right. Get down here, Stefan. I want you to work with me. Right. Vincent asks, if you were going to start a restaurant in the world we live in now, how would you go about it? Well, I think Maple, a startup I invested in, Mike, I'm not counting, is, uh, is doing it which is, it's a restaurant that, in New York City that doesn't have a place to actually go in. 
So it realizes that by percentage, if you play the math, especially in New York City, if I was to open in New York, your economics are so much better being a delivery company than actually having the overhead of the restaurant. This is something I think about a lot with Wine Library, which is a bricks and clicks organization. We have a lot of overhead to run the store versus the dot com, and it's how much energy you want to put against it. So I'd probably launch a restaurant that was very unique in the way that it served um, <clears throat> patrons locally in a physical restaurant environment. Maybe open on Saturdays only, and then the rest was delivery. Something clever, something that gave it pizzazz based on when I was open, and then, and then the delivery would be the backbone and the, the infrastructure in a New York environment. Somewhere else, I'd probably go for, I'd find an amazing chef and go for like por- por- uh, what it, porridge. That's why I brought up the other day. I try to win on something that other people aren't doing a bunch of, like obviously tacos and premium burgers. I still don't think there's a hot dog winner. You know, it feels like there's somebody can win the Shake Shack hot dog game, so. Chris asks, is it more effective to market your humble self or a caricature of yourself in today's service-based tech industry? Chris, the best thing to do, <laughs> this is a good time to answer this question. The best way to do anything is to be the truth. So sometimes I'm humble, and sometimes I'm egotistical, and sometimes I'm ridiculous, Um, and this would be one of those times. I think your honest self is always the right answer. If you're trying to play to what the market likes right now, you're gonna always have to change, right? Right now, entrepreneurship is cool. By the way, when the tech bubble bursts, when God forbid, and and I haven't been able to, uh, Send my love to a lot of my business associates that live in the Paris area. I obviously grew up in the wine business, know a lot of people in that town. And so, God forbid, when that ha- when not if when that happens in the U.S. and the market pops, entrepreneurship is not going to be hot. Practical paying your bills is going to get hot. We've had a great ten-year run here that everybody's kind of living in right now, and all you youngsters haven't really tasted the alternative. You haven't tasted the stock market splitting in half, jobs not being available, you not getting recruited by everybody, your homies from school saying, come start a business with me. Practicality is really on the horizon. I see it. Oh, there you are, practicality. It's coming, and when it comes, it's going to be an interesting uh, market change. This show, hopefully I'm doing it when it happens. Well, hopefully I'm not. So hopefully it doesn't happen for a while, but um, I think you have to be you because I was entrepreneur when it wasn't sexy. I'm entrepreneur now, and I promise you, and I'll play this clip 22 years from now, I will be entrepreneur when it's not sexy again. Awesome. we got to get the 40s on camera for sure. Okay. The 40s is diesel. Okay, cool. I'm, I'm excited. Oh, Jesus. Hammer to underhand. Mike, all right, question of the day. What's going on with your workout regimen? Where are you in your process with your thing? India, where are you at? Uh, yeah, I'm doing good. You know, I felt the wagon a little bit, but. Maintaining, building maintaining, strength. Maintaining, building strength, yes. You keep asking questions. <laughs> Mike will keep making me lift weights. <laughs> See you guys later, thanks for watching. D-Rock, eat it, Less bad lighting. That's it? Yeah. I did one extra? See ya.